My name is Joycelyn Elders. I usually just say I'm retired. And they say, retired doing what? And I said, retired running around, upsetting everybody. All the circumstances that she had to overcome uh, to get to college and then to graduate from college and get a medical degree and, uh, and then have the extraordinary career she had after it is really a kind of an amazing story. I was the oldest of eight sisters and brothers. We lived on a farm and we was very poor. So that meant we had to work. Coming out of Southwest Arkansas at the time when uh, she grew up, uh, uh, you know, in, in those days of seg segregation and Jocelyn did not let that hinder her. She never had any bitterness about, uh, about her childhood and about all the discrimination uh, against uh, everybody of her race and against her family. Uh, to overcome all of that is, uh, is just simply remarkable. Now they have a chair for her at the Med Center, but on that chair, you're not going to have any information about when she was in college up there. She couldn't eat with her colleagues. She had to go off to a room and eat by herself. She couldn't eat in the lunchroom, see. She uh, didn't seem to let it get in her way of her career. I remember once she said, I didn't come to medical school to eat with white students. I came to medical school to study medicine. Dr. Elders is one of my heroes. I mean, it's just this incredible admiration I have for her, not only her courage and her tenacity, her insightfulness, the idea that she had a goal or a mission and a vision and she was going to see that accomplished and uh, she wasn't gonna let anyone get in her way. She's, in my view, the most distinguished graduate ever from UAMS Medical School. And to achieve this, uh, with all the obstacles that she faced is just amazing. Well, as you know, I'm a pastor, so a lot of my language is religious language, and I call her a visionary leader, uh, a, a, a thought-provoking visionary leader. I always have always felt if you climb and make it to the top, or top of the ladder of success, Make sure you send the ladder back down for the rest. And that's just been a part of me. I met Dr. Elders in 1985 when I was in medical school. She was one of my professors. She is, I think, the greatest mother figure there is. And I think Dr. Elders, I know Dr. Elders wanted everyone to succeed. She wanted me to succeed and she did everything uh, possible in terms of a, of a person guiding you through your journey, your life journey, as well as your professional journey. Yeah, I don't think Arkansas would be quite the same without having had uh, Joycelyn Elders for that, particularly that 10 years or so that she was uh, head of the state health department and then as attorney, as Surgeon General as well. She made a big difference uh, uh, in Arkansas. In my mind, she was very effective and what she did, she caused change. She didn't just talk. I mean, you could actually see things happening. And today, the teen pregnancy rates, certainly over the last 20 years in this state and country, are both uh, down. And I think that's in large part due to Dr. Elder's work. And sometimes it's only after when I look back 20, 30, 40 years that I realize how much has changed, how much things have really changed. And the, one of the things that, that I've noticed, I've seen change, is cer certainly is that now we can talk about sexual, human sexuality or healthy sexuality before we whispered about it. We couldn't talk about it. There's only one Joycelyn Elders, I think, or at least in a lifetime, I guess. Uh, it's too bad there are not more 